cast your mind back to 2008. Windows Vista was sadly everywhere and gaming focused laptops were becoming more popular. With Core 2 Duo processors and really powerful discrete graphics, for the time, playing the latest games was possible, yes, even Crisis. And thankfully that meme has died. But something that hasn't died is this gaming laptop from 2008. This is the ASUS Pro 55S, and today we're going to be cleaning it up, upgrading it, and seeing exactly what it can do in 2021. So, let's get started. Like most laptops that have been used for many years, but likely never been cleaned like this one, it is a bit dusty. Okay, very dusty, but definitely cleanable. The keyboard has also seen better days and is honestly quite filthy. I'd be very interested to see just how dusty the inside of this laptop is, as it looks like there's only a single air exhaust vent, and that single vent is responsible for cooling both the processor and the ATI Radeon graphics which sadly only support up to DirectX 10, meaning most new games won't run on here. All of that is inside a pretty compact glossy plastic case, which is a real fingerprint magnet. It's good to see that ASUS included a 24 month warranty when this was manufactured back in November of 2008, so let's power it up and see exactly what we're dealing with. Thankfully this laptop does turn on, booting to Windows 7, but considering I don't know the password, that's as far as I can get for now. Before we take things further, I think it's time we give it a clean with a healthy dose of eucalyptus oil. As I frequently say, clean any electronics you buy second hand even if they don't look that dirty. There could be lots of germs and bacteria sitting right on the surface. I paid close attention to the keyboard which ended up looking pretty tidy in the end. To begin the disassembly I started with the battery. A replacement can be bought for around $35 online. I'll also be replacing the original mechanical hard disk with an SSD. The Hitachi drive that was already in here had a capacity of 250GB and a speed of 5400RPM. Not exactly a fast drive. And to get in further there are several Phillips head screws that hold the back plate on. This gives us access to everything we need. Without even having to take it apart very far we've got access to the RAM, CPU, graphics processor and the Wi-Fi card. Several small screws hold the heat pipe in place. And now we'll break through the seal which has definitely voided our warranty. And with the single fan unplugged I could crack the hardened thermal paste to finally release the cooling system. In this laptop the processor is actually socketed and can be upgraded. To make this laptop a little bit more powerful I'm going to be upgrading the CPU to a T8300 running at 2.4GHz. And I got this off of eBay for only $11. To install the new CPU all we've got to do is correctly orientate it and it'll fall into place. Inside the casing there was a small amount of dust so I decided to simply brush it off. Considering how dirty the outside was, the air exhaust fins were not clogged with dust, much to my disappointment. Regardless I still cleaned it off for maximum airflow. And after cracking open the fan I could see that it was also not that dusty. Considering this laptop is nearly 13 years old it must have been used in a pretty clean environment. The thermal paste on the copper block was very hard, and even with some isopropyl alcohol I struggled to get it off. Using the blunt end of some tweezers I was able to remove it, but I did accidentally scratch the surface, not on the part that makes contact with the CPU lid thankfully. The ATI Radeon graphics chip was using a very thin thermal pad, but I'll be replacing it with some thermal paste. I use Arctic MX4 which is non-conductive and very good at transferring heat. Now the heatsink can be carefully screwed back on, and the freshly cleaned out fan can be put back in place. After confirming that the system had the maximum of 4GB of RAM, the back cover could be clipped back on. To make the system far more responsive, I'm swapping out that old 5400RPM mechanical drive for an inexpensive Crucial BX500 solid state drive. Swapping it over is as easy as putting the SSD in the caddy the original drive was housed in. With my fingers crossed, I press down the power button. Relievingly, the new processor does work and shows up as the 2.4GHz T8300 that it's supposed to be. Now to install an operating system. I decided to go with a Linux distribution, Ubuntu 16.4 as it'll be pretty light on this old hardware. And once installed, it simply didn't work. I restarted it a few times but still had no luck. I ran a memory test to see whether it had anything to do with the RAM potentially being faulty, and after 2 hours I got no errors detected at all. So I decided to try a different flavour of Linux. 
To create a USB installer, all I had to do was download the ISO and mount it using this free program, but it too wouldn't load properly. And as a last resort, I simply decided to install Windows 7, a much older and no longer supported platform. This was an operating system officially supported by ASUS, and they've even still got all the drivers on their website, which is neat. And it did indeed work. Windows 7 installed without any problems, so I could now install all the software I wanted to. And after putting it back together, I can appreciate how much cleaner that keyboard really is. So I think it's time we play some games and see just how this gaming laptop from 2008 performs. I've got my eucalyptus drops, let's get playing. Starting with a simple game that existed in some form when this laptop came out, Old School RuneScape, otherwise known as RuneScape back then, runs absolutely great on this laptop. Let's move on to something a little more challenging. The original Star Wars Battlefront 2 runs absolutely fine on here at medium settings. Having 512 megabytes of video memory was considered a lot back in 2008 and definitely helps when it comes to gaming. Now for a game that came out two years after this laptop was released. Fallout New Vegas was still a bit choppy even with the graphical settings on low, but you could get by playing it like this. Tux Kart Racing is a decent little racing game that's free to download on nearly every operating system. It runs very fluidly here with the graphical settings turned down a bit. So why don't I try joining my Minecraft server? It doesn't look right at all. This is sadly what you'll find running modern games on very outdated and no longer supported graphics cards. However, going back to a much older version of Minecraft, it runs absolutely fine. Note to self, don't make your house out of flammable blocks and explosives. And not too surprisingly, older games such as Halo look and run great on this machine. And I also found the web browsing experience pretty good. Full HD YouTube playback was absolutely fine. This is a solidly built laptop, but sadly it uses quite a lot of glossy plastic that is hard to keep clean. The typing experience is very good and I would have loved one of these back when I was a kid. With a dual layer DVD burner and a lot of ports, Azus did a good job fitting this into a relatively compact design. While laptops of this vintage are probably never going to increase in value, I think they're a cool piece of tech that's worth remembering. Thank you very much for watching. Laptops have truly come a long way in the last 13 years. And recently I've been using the M1 MacBook Pro, and honestly, it is crazy how much performance you can get out of such a low powered device. Anyway, if you've liked the video, feel free to leave a like, and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.